Hello everybody, and I am going to do a quick garden tour on my deck. This hummingbird is following me around. They've got more food than they know what to do with. And I figured, you know what, it's such a beautiful morning. Look at the Oriole, he's sitting in the tree. Let me see if you can see him. Everything here is real. Nothing's added in on that one. I'm not even gonna drop in any inserts except maybe on a caterpillar. Uh, but no, the only thing I'm doing is adjusting my camera from manual to auto so you can see different things that I see. That tree is full of birds. Let's start over here. It's gonna be very simple and quick. It's just, it's just so beautiful this morning. I, I figured I gotta do this now. Here I'm just still, you're getting my stevia. Nothing's done in here at all. But look at all the bottom. I haven't done it. What do you, my kitty keeps looking at me. What's the matter, kitty? Now, who's she talking to? You haven't fed us breakfast yet. It's early. You have a few minutes. All right. Here on the bottom, I've got tomatoes that have come up. You know, volunteers. I didn't plant them. They're coming up. I've got uh, garlic chives, uh, parsley, lettuce, of course. And even though it's starting to bolt, it still tastes so good. I have been picking and making salad almost every night depends if we're having tacos or what we're having but look at this isn't this gorgeous now how am i getting this lettuce to grow here i'm really good first of all it is more in the shade it's getting very little sun because it's warmer here and yes we got warm the past couple days hopefully it will stay really warm but here it's in the shade it's not getting any sunlight so the only sun it's getting is reflective light the mint is doing really good too look at the size of the leaves on the mint of course, I do know why a lot of that is that way. We'll get to that later. But it's doing really good. So the mint is really happy not being in direct sunlight, too. And the lettuce, of course, this isn't even the biggest leaves. I pulled all the big leaves off last night. See, I'm pulled from the bottom so the plant will just keep growing and growing. And we can get lettuce as long as we can. This is parsley. It's going to seed. And this is some cutting, probably collard, I put in one of these containers. I want to move it. I do a lot of container gardening. You know that so I can move it. Plus, it also holds moisture underneath when it's in here. So it's really good. It's good for the plants. Now, this one bolted. And see the color of the leaf of this romaine lettuce? It will be bitter. You could eat it, but it's not going to taste as good. But it's bolted, and it is going to go to seed. It's going to have flowers soon, and then it will have seed. And so here are some seeds. See, this is the seed from the lettuce. I really should collect some because it, I grow it everywhere. I just grab it. Look at that. And then you've got the seed. And I can toss it anywhere back inside. Yes, these are orange trees. And this is a hummingbird stand I just made. And I didn't think about it. I should have made it and showed you how I did it. But this was an S-hook. Let me see if I can move this out of the way. This was a hook I got at the dollar store and it was something you're supposed to hook on a tree and hang a hummingbird feeder from and this was a garden stand let me back up the camera a little bit see and what i did was instead of sticking it in the ground i bent it made hooks and then i bent the wire that was twisted around brought it back out hoping you can see that and it will hold a couple hummingbird feeders so if i wanted to i could put a hummingbird feeder there one there one here and there's another hook here. It was just, and look how I put them together. Zip ties, I zip tied the whole thing. And when I was done with it, so this thing cost me $2 because it's two different garden type ornament things. Um, I zip tied it to a, a steak, one of those green steaks to steak tomatoes. And then I just stuck it here for fun to get it out of the way. And the hummingbirds came and checked it out. So I stuck a feeder on that. And that's a 99 cent hummingbird feeder. And then, of course, I put my little bread ties on so they can sit there. You can put wire, too. Doesn't matter. Whatever way you want to do it. And they've been coming here and feeding all morning. And if, I, if they don't come while we're doing it, I'll drop in the little footage that I did this morning of them. And again, like I said, I haven't done anything here. That is the wheat that I grow for the dogs. It's just plain wheat. Same thing you would grow you know, for making green drinks, except we get it at the feed store and it's called red wheat. So cheap. I don't even know how much it costs for 25 pounds of wheat. And just sprinkle a little bit in, it grows. The dogs like to come out and nibble on that. They know it's theirs. And when it starts to get too big, 
I chop it out, I cut it out, and that becomes part of my compost for my plants. So it's a win-win all the way around. The dogs get it, and I get it. Let's take a look over here. Again, I have not done anything along here. I know it's the sun is just coming up, so it's really bright. But I still have dill and everything growing, and a couple apple trees. I've got to decide what I'm going to do with. But this is lettuce that's all gone to seed. This I haven't done anything with. I'm still starting to work on it. But the tomatoes, this is from last year's plant, is loaded, just loaded. But again, I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, now as I'm starting to plant up my containers, you can go back and see the videos, how I set this up. They're filling out to the point we're not going to be able to see them. <laughs> and I'm just starting to get these set up. And I've got some seedlings coming up here because I don't know yet where I'm going to put them. And those are zucchini. See, I just left the package there. Let me move this over. And I've got one I planted there in the cup. I think the cup is underground. So I'm going to have a zucchini there. And then I did plant one of my seedlings there. Look at that. That thing is just full already of little zucchinis starting. Look at that. That's zucchini. So we've got a lot of zucchini. And I think there's some sprouting broccoli I planted from seed. The original seed, I bought it quite a few years ago. I planted one back there. You might be able to just see it peeking through. And then, of course, I've got purple kale and celery and all different things growing all through here. Now, the reason these plants on the deck, look at this. This is a tiny tomato plant that turned into a giant. It's in the pot there. And this is a tomato plant in there. And again, there's lettuce. Now, this lettuce is going to bolt. See, and this one, you can still eat some of the bottom leaves. But once they turn that kind of dull green, you can eat them. They're just not going to taste as good. That's all. And then mint growing, and that's basically it. But what I was going to say is there is my Wern Farm compost in place container, and I'll put a link to the video. This is where I can take kitchen scraps, leaves, whatever I've got, dump it in that bucket. This lid comes off. This comes off. I think I'm going to change this and put something lighter up here because then I've got to lift this off every time and take the lid off and dump. So if I have something lighter, it's quicker to remove the lid. But that's feeding these tomatoes. This one, it's feeding. And it's feeding everything in there that's taking off and growing. And then it's dripping down here into the parsley. And of course, you've seen it. This comes off. And there's my plant food. And I put some of that in a watering can, you know, plant water with water, and I water the plants and I water the tomato. That tomato gets a lot because I get lazy and I take a dipper and I just dip it from there into there and that tomato plant loves it. I can't believe just a few weeks ago it was so tiny and it's full of tomatoes. Look at the flowers it's got growing and everything. So that has been just great. Now let me swing around real quick. Same thing here, These, this lettuce, you watched me plant this with all the onions in there. And yes, people were saying, you're overcrowding them. Of course I did, but I'm picking them as I need them. It's late in the season for onions. Onions do much better in, in the cooler season, so it's getting to the point, see how they're falling over, where they really need to be picked. So I'll leave them, and I'll pick them as I need them. But the tomatoes are doing good. The peas are kind of dying out a little bit. It's, it is overcrowded, but you know what? I don't care. To my garden and um, tomatoes are growing really good down there I've got a bunch of pomegranate look at that pomegranate trees growing and then I've got more tomatoes and their oregano mint walking onions lettuce look how much you can grow in a salt small spot again I'm not promoting these in any way these are too small look how small they are this you don't need what the reason I like this side though and I may end up changing that out and putting bigger containers there is it's in the shade now the sun is moving and now we're getting shade on this wall and these plants prefer the warmth but the shade and the lettuce will take off this is dill and that again is lettuce seed it's all positioned too now if I wanted to I could stick tarps over this but I think this one's going to do fine but I really like the containers because Literally anybody can take one container, just like that, put a small worm farm compost bucket in there and grow all you want in one container. You can grow some lettuce. You don't have to grow everything you eat, but you can grow some of the stuff you eat. 
and you could pick colors like purple kale look at that and parsley look at that isn't that gorgeous parsley and lettuce and celery things you can add to something you're eating and that's what's so great out of one container and it's a system so you're feeding you're watering that and it's going into the worm farm compost bin whatever you want to call it and then it's with all the holes i'll put the link you can see how i did it it's feeding that it's the excess water is running onto the parsley that was a nothing little plant a few weeks ago and go in there and you save that and you use it and that's what's watering that tomato and that's why all these plants are doing so well because i am using that i'm putting in you know taking some of it putting it in a watering can and watering the plant see here's some runoff here and that's what I do. This is the same thing, but there's no worm farm. But you don't want to throw this away. So this tomato plant gets stuff all day. Look at that. Now, I've talked about this, about making holes in your containers after you get the setup you want. Even with holes after the setup, I found out that water, and I think I've talked about this, makes its own direction. By water making its own direction, you have no idea which way that water is going to decide to go. Right, kitty? Right, kitty? You need to be brushed. And I had it going in underneath. So what I had to do was cut the, just any plastic to redirect the water. See, I did it there. Anyone that wasn't going into the buckets, because I thought, why isn't the water going into the buckets? I don't know if I can get that to go now. Kitty, you're going to get wet. Let's put this back. Let's see if I can get it to go. But it wasn't going where I wanted it to go. And so, see? Now, it's going, it's well watered, because I already watered it. But see what it's doing? By just slipping a piece of plastic, see when it's not there, it was kind of almost missing the bucket. I just slipped a little piece of plastic. Now, now I'm not gonna be able to do it. But there, now it's going underneath, dripping down, but it's going exactly where I want it. So if something's not running where you want it, think out of the box. And that's just the lid off a yogurt or cottage cheese container. I cut the lid so it's flat and it will slide underneath. And look at that. So there's always, I think there's always a fix. And again, why is this one just taking off? I mean, a giant plant on a deck, not in the ground, because I've got a worm farm and even the best of all, a compost container here now, this is a small pot just growing some mint and there is my little worm farm and what I do is I push the soil over and I compost right in there so let's say I took this old leaf off let's say this leaf I would put it in here and push it underneath so I would do the same thing with food scraps put it under the soil so it breaks down right away let me put the other thing back and then I put the lid on sorry for all the shaking the lid on so in case you had critters or anything they can't take it off again I'll put a link to that I'm going to actually do a whole video just on this I'm putting one together so you can see how you can make a small tiny worm farm or compost in place the main thing is composting in place even if there's no earthworms the microbes will get in there and break things down too people have asked me over and over where do you get earthworms if you don't have a place, you know, a soil, ground, someplace that you can go and pick up a rock or pick up a flower pot, then see if you can at a neighbor's. Because anytime you pick up a flower pot and you look underneath and it's sitting on the ground, chances are there's going to be some earthworms if that's a flower pot that's being used, you know, one that's got something in it and they're watering it because that's where earthworms gravitate. They gravitate to under a flower pot. They like being underground, but they also like coming to the surface. If you don't see anything, but it is a flower pot, you know, that is being used and watered, just take a shovel of the soil that's underneath. It seems like, and I do this a lot, there must be some worm eggs in there because I'll put it in my compost containers and I, lo and behold, end up with earthworms. Worst comes to worst, you can always go to a nursery and buy the cheapest amount of earthworms if you want. But I know, try it that way. I know you can get earthworms because if it's not you, it's a neighbor, friend, or tell a friend. Can you bring me some shovels of damp soil from underneath, you know, in your garden somewhere? And just try it. You have nothing to lose. So that's basically it that I want to show you. Oh, one more last thing. 
I put on my Instagram a picture of a, and I don't go to Instagram a lot, so don't worry about it, a picture of a cabbage butterfly that was here. And I missed one of the worms, and look at that. That, it's very hard to see. You see, it's a glare, and you can't really see it. Let's see if I can get closer. No, it can't, it's just a glare, no matter how I try to do that. So I can cover it that way. That's a cocoon. And I found the leaf like that, and the leaf's starting to move, and a cabbage butterfly has made a cocoon. I actually saw the, the worm there, the caterpillar, and then it built the cocoon. So at this point, it's not harming any of my plants. I have no reason to destroy that. I'm gonna leave that. It's probably, it looks like it's almost done. It's probably going to leave in the next day or two. It's been there for, I guess almost a week now. So it's going to be gone soon. But that's it. I'm still working on these. I still want to get plants all along there where it drips. I want it to drip into plants. So I haven't gotten to that yet. So maybe in a couple weeks we'll come back and see what else I've got. Dinosaur kale cuttings. This is a pepper plant I've got to move. This is my little moringas. They've been suffering from not being warm enough, but they're starting to come about. I've got a whole bunch of them scattered. Oh, and one more thing, because a few people have asked. They said, I didn't see the moringa. It's celery. You're right. It was celery, and some people thought it was parsley. But here's the moringa in the center. This just kind of the celery seeds fell in there. But look at the moringa. It's growing. And I'm going to let it, it's taking off now because now we have warm weather. So it's doing really good. And I moved my strawberry uh, plant over here, my spinach strawberry, because something was eating it, even with the wire basket, in my garden. And I think it was slugs getting through there at night. Now look at all the leaves coming back here. So I don't have the slugs here in my garden on the deck. When you patio garden, you probably eliminate a lot of the insects you would have that comes out of the soil at night, you know, because they live in crevices. You would find slugs in the soil in a garden would tunnel down and then they come up at night. That's why you'll see them roaming around because they live underground. They have little crevices they can find, whether it's bricks or whatever. So I don't have that here. If I see one, let's say I brought them over, you just toss them over the deck. So here I was trying to figure out what was going on. I found a bunch of leaves falling up and they were stuck together and look what I found inside. I'm not even sure what kind of caterpillar that is. And he's taking a trip off the side of my deck. But he folded up the leaves on this little Swiss chard cutting I had taken. See, they were, and it was stuck together like that. He literally hid himself inside. And when I just opened it, there he was inside. He's probably done that little damage. But like I said, you know the old saying, they're going to the farm? Well, he's going over the edge. Hey, look at all the plants down there. Okay. He can find someplace else to eat. He's not eating in my garden here. Some of them have gotten past me. <laughs> but, um... You, you end up with a container garden. You have much more control over what's going on. And I love it. Will I give up my real garden? No, I'm not going to give up my, my big garden. Because there I've got the solar pumps going and the birds come in. Not that the birds don't come in here. I have got all kinds of birds coming up here hunting around. But nothing like in the big garden. But I could. I have no water feature here yet. So we'll see. Just some solar lights that go on at night but nothing for the birds except for the hummingbird uh, feeders that I've got. There's one, my daughter bought that for me years ago. And let's, let's put it this way, Su suction cups are not our best friend. So it was one of these window ones that you put on a, a window with suction cups and it used to fall off all the time. And I don't know what happened to the holder so I put a piece of wire on there and I hung it on this hook I have. I think that was a display for a little ornament of some sort. And the hummingbirds have been feeding and the Oreos. I will drop that footage in. The Oreos were there this morning and yesterday and they have learned how to feed off of that. So I am bringing those in. But container gardening, you can do the same, if not more, 
because you have more control. I don't have a rodent problem here, really. I don't have the squirrels. You're not going to have raccoons. Um, people have had problems with doves. You, you can scare them away with maybe little things you can hang up that might move around. I don't have doves on here. But there's so much more control when you have a container garden. And the best of all, you can sit down. If somebody is not able to stand, they have a bad back, they're in a wheelchair, all this can be serviced by sitting down on a chair. You can move your chair around, sit on a chair, and take care of your garden. So there's no excuse. Everyone can garden, even with just a chair. All you have to do is get somebody to help you, maybe set it up, but once it's set up, it's good for many, many years. So with that, I think I've covered everything. And like I said, think out of the box. I ended up buying something, that, a little steak with a, with a flower and a ladybug on it to stick in the garden. And then I bought the hummingbird hook. I went to another dollar store and they had the hummingbird hook, the last one. And I put those two together. So it didn't cost, it cost me under $3 because I get those steaks at uh, 99 cents store off and on two for a dollar. I can move it around, I can stake it anywhere, and you just, it's so easy. Zip ties! Just silly little zip ties, look at that! It was so fun to just put together, so think about that. You can make things for your garden! This is so beautiful. Anyways, I'm gonna go get some coffee. It is early in the morning, the sun is coming up, and Kitty wants to know, where's breakfast? Right, Kitty? She says, what's going on? Where's my breakfast? Yes, we're going to go in right now, get coffee and breakfast. They get breakfast, they get lunch, they get snack, they get dinner, they get another snack. I don't know. Anyways, with that, oh, there's my sage. That's right, didn't show my sage. Still not sure where I want to put it, so I've left that in the pot. Oh, it's setting root. I better figure out where I'm going to put it. And that's why I like pots, because you can move things around. Don't worry if you lift it and the roots make it go a little saggy. It'll pick right up. But I'm just trying to figure out if it needs the sun. Oh, you need to see this. Is that beautiful? He's checking out my garden. I told you, I can't remember offhand the name. I'll put the name before I put this up. Look, he's got a little crest. Oh, oh he's catching insects in the air. He flew in the air. Oh, he just took off. He must be checking out my garden. There must be something here. It must be attracting little insects. And then, of course, you've got the Oriole up there. And he feeds off the hummingbird feeders. And I the, and Gary did tell me that they do have babies, again, in his garden. So with that, I, like I said, I'm going in to get some coffee. And Kitty's going to go get breakfast. And we'll keep you updated because I still have so much more to do. I have to set up all this too. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to set up and what I'm going to do. So if you want to put up one container, make yourself a little thing inside so you can compost in place right in your container and don't throw the water that drips off away. Just put anything on top, those lids. Both of these have holes in them. So when it goes into the parsley it goes into that lid and into the bucket it doesn't go anywhere and then I use that to rewater the plants and this is the proof look at the size of these things and this has been set up in less than two months all of this have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow bye bye everybody